set about preparing the tables or the seats and carrying the golden dishes of food. There was abundance of food, everything having flavor of its own, exceeding anything that could be imagined. When all was ready, the call was sent forth, and the saints of all past ages gathered around the tables to celebrate the wedding of the king's great son. The consummation of all their hopes, the realization of all highest joy in heaven itself, came to its highest point when the harlot, the beggar, the sinner, and the one-time offscorings of the earth came from the east and the west and sat down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at this festal table in the kingdom of God. As all arose and expectantly reached its greatest height, the son himself came in and sat down at the tables, surrounded by his blood-bought and white robe clad bride, the redeemed of every nation and tribe and tongue, and drank with them the fruit of the vine. Adullam saw the books opened and the day of judgment. They saw the books in which the deeds of men are recorded, and saw the judge upon the throne, before whom all men were judged out of the books. The righteous were set apart to stand in one great company on the one side, while those whose names were not in the book of life were gathered into another great company to stand on the other side. The one company was separated to enter the kingdom of God and the life of the ages. The other group was doomed to go into the fire prepared for the devil and his angels. A few were privileged to have visions of the new heaven and the new earth. The new heaven was so filled with Shekinah glory that the children could not carefully look into it. The new Jerusalem, the city four square, occupied the central position in the new earth. They saw the celestial city with its paradise as it is now, but descended upon the new earth. The whole new earth was much like the paradise that is now and will then still be in the city of God, the bride of the Lamb. It was the earth God wanted for his children, more than restored by him who is more than conqueror. It was the new heaven and the new earth that had passed through the new birth and that will never pass away. The earth where God will again pitch his tent with men, where he will forever be called their God, and they shall all and always be his children. Amen. Chapter 9 Chinese Beggar Boy Prophecies In fulfillment of the scripture that in the last days your sons shall prophesy. Acts 2.17 One of the little ten-year-old beggar sons of China was used as the mouthpiece of the Lord to bring us a message by direct inspiration. A few months previous, this boy, ragged and dirty, in fact more nearly clothed with filth than with garments, came to our door with his two companions to ask if he might come in. When bathed and dressed, the boy looked like a guileless little fellow, and such he proved to be. He at once took every Bible story and sermon to heart. He soon learned to pray, and we could hear him praying in bed very earnestly every night. When the Holy Spirit fell upon us, this boy was among the first to receive the baptism of the Spirit, speaking with other tongues as on the day of Pentecost. As surely as ever God spoke in the past, when men were moved upon by the Holy Spirit, so that Scripture was inspired of God, and prophets declared their message to be thus saith the Lord, with such assurance that they were ready to back their convictions with their lives, even so surely the living God still reigns and speaks to the children of men by direct prophecy, when the circumstances demand it, and faith and other conditions are according to His divine will. One night the power of the Lord was present in an unusual manner. Heaven seemed not far away. Then it was that our one-time, little, friendless beggar boy seemed to leave this filthy earth and to be called up to heaven. Ushered into the presence of the Lord Jesus, he fell prostrate at his feet in humble adoration and worship. As a matter of fact, the boy lay prostrate in the middle of the room, surrounded by his companions, who sat about him on the floor, listening intently to a message that came through him from the Lord. Such gripping, heart-searching words I have never heard. While the boy sobbed and wept with deepest grief, the message was given, a sentence or two at a time, in a clear, strong voice. The language came in rhythm. The choice of words was the simplest and purest. The intonation of the voice, the choice of language, the penetrating power of every word was such that no person who heard could ever doubt that this little simple-minded Samuel was speaking by direct supernatural inspiration from God. Prostrated in vision at the feet of the Lord, the boy said, Lord Jesus, I am not worthy to be here or to be saved at all. I am only a little street beggar. Then Jesus addressed the boy. The boy did not know it at the time, but the Lord actually spoke through the boy as a mouthpiece, using the first person and addressing us and the children sitting about him. Here is the thus saith the Lord, that we wish might grip your hearts as it still grips our own. 
the message from Christ. I weep tonight. I am heartbroken. I am in deep sorrow because those who believe in me are so very few. I planned and prepared heaven for everyone, having made room for all the people in all the world. I made the new Jerusalem in three great cities, one above the other, with plenty of space for all men. But men will not believe me. Those who believe are so very few. I am sad, so very sad. This message was given between heart-rending sobs and floods of tears from the boy. Since men will not believe me, I must destroy the wicked earth. I planned to visit it with three great calamities, but it is so wicked that I have added a fourth. If you have any friends, tell them to repent quickly. Persuade all men as rapidly as possible to believe the gospel. But if people will not listen and will not accept your message, the responsibility will not be upon you. Get the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If you will tarry and believe, I will baptize you. The devil deceives you by making you think you will not receive the baptism. But wait and seek, and I will baptize you, and give you power to cast out devils and to heal the sick. Those who receive the seal of the Holy Spirit are to preach and testify, and I will be with you to help and protect you in times of danger. If you think perhaps you will not get to heaven, that thought is of the devil. I will not destroy my own children. I will protect and save every one. Not one of mine will perish. I will overcome. Pray for Mr. and Mrs. Baker, and I will give them power to cast out devils and to heal the sick. The children in the home should obey. Do not fight. Do not lie. Live at peace. When you pray, pray from the heart. Do not let your love grow cold. Tell other churches they too should seek the Holy Spirit. All churches must press forward. The devil is coming to earth in a few years, and there will be great tribulation. Do not worry. I will protect and care for you. People everywhere will gather together and fight in one place, after which I will come to punish the earth. You must not fear, for those who believe in me will be called up to blow trumpets and to play harps. I will destroy two of every three. When I come, everything must obey my voice. Houses will tumble down, mountains will fall, trees will be destroyed. There will be utter destruction where I will not leave one blade of grass. Those who worship idols will perish. All sorcerers and spiritist mediums shall be cast into hell. Only those who believe the gospel will be saved. Thus saith the Lord, spoken to Adullam, and, we believe, to all to whom we may be able to pass this message of prophecy. This message from our risen Lord was given in Chinese as above recorded. The sentences spoken slowly and distinctly with pauses between. I wrote them as they were given, often repeated a time or two, so there could be no mistake on the part of the hearers. There was ample time to record without mistake every word the Lord spoke through this little inspired prophet of his choice. The message complete, the little boy arose and told us he had been at the feet of Jesus. He did not know that the Lord had spoken through him as well as to him in the first person. He repeated the prophecy, saying, Jesus said that, Jesus said this, etc. The prophecy already heard, already written, and then again repeated from the little prophet's memory item by item, made it easy to see how in the days of old the prophet spoke as moved by God, how a scribe might record every word as it came from the lips of the prophet, or how the prophet himself could record his own messages, truly saying, Thus saith the Lord. In days of old, when religious and worldly men had departed from a simple plan in a personal living God who spoke to men, and when their unbelief and wickedness was such that in those days there was no open vision, 1 Samuel 3, God found a pure-minded little Samuel and spoke to him in an audible voice a message that was fulfilled to the very letter. Accordingly, we believe that God, who is still the same living God that has spoken to and through others in the past, has in this day of wickedness and unbelief given to us through our little Chinese Samuel a thus saith the Lord that will shortly come to pass, a message to be heeded to our eternal joy or neglected to eternal sorrow. Chapter 10 Some Light on Writing the Bible Through this outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon these Chinese children, much light was thrown upon the writing of the Word of God. Prophecy Fulfilled Such an outpouring of the Spirit, attended with such supernatural manifestations, is in itself a testimony that the Bible was written by God. He alone knows the future. Fulfilled prophecy was, in the mind of Christ and the apostles, sufficient proof of the hand of God in the writing of the Scriptures. In what we have recorded about this outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon these children, 